Hey guys, Level Cap here, and welcome to another episode of This Week in Gaming. The next patch for Battlefield 5 drops on December 4th. While no official patch notes are available, several DICE employees have discussed what to expect on social media and Reddit. Here's a few of the things mentioned so far. An apply all button will be added to the weapon customization system. The automatic deployment when a round starts will be removed from all modes except final stand. Top gunners on tanks will be able to duck, avoiding enemy fire. It's not clear if this will just apply to tank gunners or all stationary weapons. Bombers won't be able to spawn bomb the enemy team when a round starts. Panzerfoss currently do more damage than intended. This will be fixed. The conquest catch-up mechanic will be rebalanced to be less unfair for, to the winning team. Many weapons will get minor balance tweaks, but the medics, SMGs, and KE-7 will receive extra attention. Players frustrated with the bomb system and grand operations and front lines will be happy to hear that DICE are making the much needed changes. The bomb icon will only be visible to the enemy team for a short time when picked up. Front lines won't require the bomb to be picked up and carried. All attacking players will be able to arm the final objective. In addition to that, the December 4th update includes the first Tides of War content. The vehicle-focused Panzerstorm map, training range, and new campaign mission will be available to all players when the update goes live. As for future content, data miners have uncovered a ton of potential weapons and gadgets. Some of them suggest two new weapon classes may be added to the game. Machine pistols and carbines. Whether or not these will be universal weapon classes or limited to specific classes is unclear. Some standouts include the Browning M1919, one of the most famous American weapons from World War II. The Ribby Rolls from Battlefield 1 may return as an assault rifle. The Commando Carbine, which appeared in Under No Flag from War Story, is also seen. It might come to multiplayer as a seven-shot suppressed carbine. As for gadgets, the Panzer Shrek anti-vehicle rocket launcher and the M2 flamethrower were also included in the data mine. None of the weapons have been confirmed by DICE, but some, like the Browning and Commando Carbine, have been teased as potential items. The universal weapon classes were also discussed as a possible addition in one of the dev talk videos. Now the Battlefield community also kind of exploded recently over a tweet from Drunksy mentioning that they would be tweaking the time to kill mechanics in Battlefield 5. Clearly the community wants the time to death mechanics tweaked, but they're not so sure about the time to kill mechanics. Uh, Drunksy responded with uh, another tweet indicating that he really wasn't like going into much detail about what they're changing, but it probably won't be as drastic as players are expecting. So I'm fine with them messing with weapon balance and TTK on certain guns and stuff like that as long as it gives us a better overall balanced experience and I'm not yet gonna freak out about a time to kill adjustment until I see exactly what DICE is planning. The game still doesn't feel particularly great right now so if they're attacking it from many different angles at once that's fine with me. Countryside. Ubisoft are backtracking on censorship in Rainbow Six Siege. In-game assets that depict skulls, blood, gambling were set to be replaced with imagery that isn't outlawed in Asian territories. Instead of having two versions of Siege, one for Western countries and one for countries with stricter laws, Ubisoft planned to have one international version of the game with all of these changes. Players weren't too happy about that and after weeks of complaining, finally got Ubisoft to reconsider. The changes will be reverted ahead of the next operations launch. Speaking of the next operation, Wind Bastion is currently live in the game's technical test server. The two new operators and maps are available to all players. The latest update for Black Ops 4 brought Nuketown to Xbox and PC players. The map was added alongside a patch that made several minor balance changes and bug fixes. Probably the standout change would be several score streaks getting their score requirements adjusted. Some, such as the Dart, Lightning Strike, and the Thresher were reduced by around 50 points. Others were increased. The score given per kill by score streaks has also been reduced from 25 to 10. The game has also been data mined recently to reveal time of day variations for two multiplayer maps, Firing Range and Seaside. Seaside features rainy weather while firing range is set at night. When or even if these variants will be added to the game is still unclear. Gameplay footage of the maps is available, but that doesn't mean Treyarch has any plans to add them soon. 
The latest update for the modern military FPS World War III has been released. It adds the Team Deathmatch game mode, a TDM map called Warsaw Shopping Mall, a new anti-infantry vehicle called the Boxer, and the MSBS Bullpup Assault Rifle. The progression system's back end was also updated, which unfortunately means all players had their progression wiped. A bug that increased the bullet velocity of sniper rifles so much so that they actually function more like hitscan weapons was also fixed. Several other tweaks and balance changes were also made to get the game feeling a little bit less uneven. The fan remake of Half-Life 1, Black Mesa, is nearly finished. The developers released a trailer showing off the game's final level Zen. Half-Life's original version of Zen left a lot to be desired, even back when it was first released 20 years ago. Black Mesa's version is a total redesign from the ground up. It retains the core gameplay mechanics from the original game while updating the level's visual design and layout. Zen is expected to release in the second quarter of next year. In other Valve-related news, the Steam Link wireless HDMI box is being discontinued. It lets Steam users stream their library from a PC to their TV via their home network. When it was first released, it was one of the few such devices that actually worked well. Since then, Valve released the Steam Link app, which runs on both phones and selected smart TVs. It offers similar functionality with some enhanced features like 4K streaming. The hardware Steam Link can only do 1080p output. It was on sale for $2.50 this week during the Steam Autumn Sale, but quickly sold out. The free-to-play battle royale shooter Ring of Elysium finally has European servers. Players in that region have been waiting since the game's launch in September for local servers. They could still play the game just on international servers with very high pings. Due to an issue with daily challenges disappearing after the game's most recent update, any player that was affected will get 2,000 free XP for the next week. PUBG's latest dev letter covered the results of Fix PUBG. Overall, client FPS improved thanks to level streaming and many other optimizations. Server performance also improved, especially during the early moments of a match. Future goals include an updated matchmaking system that more quickly matches players with similar pings and minimizes overall wait times. Another dev letter focusing on anti-cheat improvements made during Fix PUBG will be released sometime soon. Star Citizen passed $200 million in crowdfunding. The Space Sim is currently the biggest crowdfunded game ever by a large margin. The latest patch for the game added its first massively inhabited planet complete with procedurally generated cities and NPCs to interact with. Star Citizen will be free to try next week. Considering that the game is finally starting to take more shape, it might actually be a good time to check it out. Fallout 76 received a 47 gigabyte patch on the PlayStation 4. The same patch on PC and Xbox One is only 15 gigabytes. Future patches are expected to be much smaller. As for what the patch actually does, there's basically nothing of note to talk about. Push to talk voice over IP, ultra wide monitor support, and an FOV slider are all in the works for PC players. The first elusive target for Hitman 2 is now live. Players will have one chance to kill the Hollywood actor before the mission ends on December 4th. Like 2016's Hitman, the new game will have several elusive targets added to the game in the coming months. The latest update for No Man's Sky, Visions, has added a ton of variety to the game's planets and wildlife. Anomalous planet biomes feature strange looking geology, plant life, and new creatures. Flora overall has become updated to be more vibrant and diverse. Hazardous planets have been expanded to include Venus flytraps and bloated gas growths. Players can also unearth fossils of various animals on the planets. And finally, crashed freights are now procedurally generated, adding much more variety to exploring them for loot. In our final story this week, the Battle of Geonosis is coming to Star Wars Battlefront 2. The expansion adds a galactic assault map set on the desert planet that was also the construction site of the first Death Star. A prequel era version of Obi-Wan Kenobi is included in the update. It's free to all players and launches on the 28th. On PC, Battlefront 2 is currently on sale for $7.50. And that wraps it up for today's episode of This Week in Gaming. As always, guys, thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you next time. This is Level Cap, signing off.